Let's get straight into today's video. Uh, we're going to turn this, my uh, already modified 3018 Pro, into this 6030 CNC. Um, the challenge for this video that I've given myself or this project is to do this for under £150 or around about $180 US, depending on exchange rates, etc. So to achieve this, I'm going to try and carry over as much as possible from the existing machine. Uh, and then we're also going to add a little bit of extra functionality in as well, which I'll cover that later in the video. Um, if you want to see, by the way, the previous video where I modified the 3018 uh, Pro, I'll link that in the, in the description below. Um, so let, let's head over to the PC. Let's have a look how we're going to do this. This is the CAD that we're going to use then for this project. So primarily we're going to be replacing all of the base section for this project. We're going to keep all of our X gantry the same as it is today on our 3018 Pro. So this um, X gantry uh, we uh, modified in a, in a previous video um, and fitted it to the 3018 to give uh, a lot more rigidity uh, to, to the machine than it had and allow us to fit a much bigger spindle on there. I'll link that in the video in the video description below. Uh, give it a click and, and go and watch that by all means um, and see what you think of that video. The difference in this particular machine is that this gantry currently on the 3018 is mounted directly to the frame and it's fully static and we're moving the bed backwards and forwards um, during the cutting process. In this version now, it, the machine's grown a little bit bigger uh, and therefore moving the bed is actually probably not uh, not the best way of doing it. So now what we're going to do is mount that same gantry onto some linear rails uh, and we'll move the gantry backwards and forwards instead. Okay, so let's turn the gantry off then so we can concentrate on the bit that we're actually going to be building in this project, which is the main base section on here. Um, let's turn the wasteboard off as well so we can just see how that's going to be constructed. So yeah, effectively we're going to just use two uh, 800 millimeter long uh, side rails uh, and these are being made out of 2080 uh, extrusion, aluminium extrusion. And then we're going to link that with these five um, 2040 extrusions as well. That leaves us with a small gap underneath uh, for running cabling, etc. We'll put a baseboard underneath as well on here. Um, you'll also notice that, they, that this sort of gap at the end is smaller than the others. It's not as well balanced. And that's because this area here will have a, a separate cover on the top uh, and we'll mount the electronics uh, in here, the controller and, thing, and the power supply can all go in this one. We can have a little removable cover on the top. So it's nice and easy to access. And then from this particular point, forwards will be where the spoil board uh, is fitted and that's our cutting area as well once it's assembled. So we're going to cut these uh, motor mounts or motor plates uh, at the back out of the out of some 18 millimeter Baltic birch that I've got left over from the gantry manufacturer. Um, we'll cut those out uh, on the 3018 first before uh, uh, disassembling it. Uh, and then we'll use those to, to mount on the back and we'll just mount those onto the end of the extrusions um, to give it plenty of support for the for the motors. And we are actually going to fit um, ball screws, uh, 800 millimeter ball screws, two of them, one on either side, rather than the one that you currently have on the 3018. So that does mean we need an extra stepper motor as well to control that extra uh, ball screw. Uh, what I was finding, I was going to fit trapezoidal screws uh, like currently fitted to the to the 3018. But when I was actually uh, researching and trying to get hold of the, get hold of them at 800 millimeters long, actually the price difference is virtually uh, nothing. I think there was about five to ten pounds difference between a trapezoidal screw and the ball screw. So it just made more sense to go ball screws. So that's what we've got in the in, in the design and that's what we'll be using on there. We'll be using the same 16 millimeter style uh, linear rails that we use on the top section as well. So that'll keep some consistency with the top. And then we'll 3D print these end caps, which will have bearings in them to hold the ends of the ball screws. And we'll also 3D print these um, adapter uh, brackets to go from the, from the existing nut that's on the ball screw up to the gantry to move the gantry along. Um, I think it's fairly straightforward design, um, pretty 
simple. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's get stripped down the uh, 3018 uh, and let's get this uh, frame assembled and get it all mounted and put together. We're just going to start then by uh, removing the base from the gantry uh, and salvaging the Y stepper motor as well from the base. So we'll just split the two apart. Then we're just going to pull all the electronics off the back as uh, all these are actually going to go inside that little electronics bay that we spoke about earlier uh, inside the, the new machine. So we don't need them on the back of the gantry. Now we're going to drill the side pieces, so we're going to drill both of them together to make sure all the holes are square and in the right places uh, so we can then attach the cross members. So I've already pre-assembled the uh, basic frame and put all the uh, screws in loose to start with and now what I'm just doing is uh, fastening them all up on a flat surface uh, and making sure everything's square as we go. So let's attach the linear rails on the sides. Uh, I'm only going to show attaching one on the video, but it's the same on both sides. We'll attach the uh, little adapter brackets now to our ball nuts and uh, fasten those all up with the screws. So let's get our first Y stepper motor fitted along with the little bracket. we we'll get the other adapter fitted to the second ball screw. We'll get the ball screw onto the machine and uh, we'll also get the second Y stepper motor fitted at this point. Then we're going to bring our gantry back and uh, fit that on. We're going to just do all the screws or attach all the screws but we're going to leave them um, loose uh, at the moment and we're going to come back to those and adjust everything and tighten them all in a second. Yeah, so I took uh, a lot of time here just to uh, make sure that everything was set square as I was tightening it up. You can see I was using a large framing square, uh, both from the surface of the table that I was using initially, uh, and also I was doing it from the frame itself of the, of the machine, and just making sure that absolutely everything was perfectly square as we were tightening it up. Once I was happy everything was square and uh, everything was tight, I turned the machine on its side and uh, was able to then attach the ball screw adapters to the gantry itself. So being a complete idiot, I managed to lose all of the footage that I took whilst, re whilst um, doing the electrics uh, on this machine. Um, but what I'm going to try and do now is just to just show you literally how simple the, the wiring really was. So this is uh, an exact uh, same board that I've got already in the machine. Um, and uh, you can see here that the um, at the top we've got an extra slot for our second um, Y stepper motor. So that's the only difference to our 3018 Pro wiring. Everything else was wired up exactly the same uh, as it was previously. The only difference is we're now using this um, slot here to uh, to control our second Y stepper motor. Um, just out of, as a point, I guess, that both these two um, slots here are both driven from the single stepper motor. It's not the best way to do it, but um, it will work for, the, for what we want to do with it. Um, and in the interest of keeping the costs as low as possible to do this, uh, this project, then... Um, uh, we're going to utilise what we already have. Attach the uh, MDF spoil board temporarily and I got the machine itself to do all of the drilling uh, for the holes for the attachment and also for the um, for the nuts for the work holding. Having then refitted the spoil board uh, correctly using the uh, proper fixings now I then uh, attached the a uh, 25 millimeter or one inch uh, surfacing bit into the uh, spindle and uh, proceeded to surface the, the whole spoil board. Uh, this took us a, a number of passes, although uh, I was only running about 0.1 of a mil cut on each pass. Uh, and this was the second pass, uh, and in the end, I think I ran three passes for this. 
you might have noticed then in the intro to this video and in this uh, clip that we're showing now there's no spindle fitted uh, good reason for that is that the 800 watt spindle that I did have um, decided to die on me a couple of days ago um, and so I'm going to replace it uh, but not with the same thing I'm going to swap it over to a uh, VFD controlled spindle uh, this is the one here uh, from Vivo um, and uh, it's a bit bigger than the old one but uh, it should uh, should be fine once it's on and mounted. Um, there's a part number there, and uh, it's also 800 watts as well. If you're interested in a review of this, drop some comments below, and I'll uh, I'll see what I can do. You might also have noticed this cutout in the end of the machine. Uh, and this is done to give us this extra functionality that I spoke about at the intro of the video. Um, it's there so that we can take our work pieces and fix them either on their side or on their end uh, to the machine. And we can either do some engraving or um, cutting, etc. on that work piece. And as you can see here on this test piece, we have just cut out some, um, some dovetails on there as a test. So this is actually a watch holder that I uh, cut on the machine just before the spindle died and you can see where I've used that feature to cut these dovetails on there. So I'm going to cover this process I think in a bit more detail in a future video so uh, please um, hit the bell icon and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for that, for that video. This is another job which I cut before the spindle gave out. Um, it's a little uh, tea lighter candle holder made in oak um, and this is what you're looking at now is before sanding. Um, this was cut with uh, a quarter inch down cut bit running at about 800 millimeters per second, two millimeters depth of cut. I could have definitely gone faster uh, or, or deeper uh, but actually I was really happy with these results. I think uh, uh, it's come out really nice and I was also able to cut six of these at the same time which I definitely couldn't do with the other machine. Let's get back to this video's challenge then of doing all of this for under £150 and was it really possible? So before I just go into that, I want to just give full disclosure. I had all of the screws, wires and little sundry bits, they were already in stock so I haven't included those in the cost but they aren't really a, a very big cost anyway, only a few pounds. Um, a new spindle that's also not included in this cost because the old spindle was running at the time when I built this machine and that failed at a later time. Um, everything else I bought in my own pocket, there was nothing provided for free and all of the costs that we're going to go through now are um, including shipping and taxes etc. Right, come on then, let's do the costs. So first up, linear rails. They are £27.50 for both. Next was the ball screws, they came in at 38.48. Then we've got our side extrusions, they came in at 42.48. And we go with our five middle extrusions, they were 24 pounds and one pence. The extra NEMA 17 for the Y axis came in at 9.99. Then the MDF for the new spoil broad, that came in also at 9.99. And finally, uh, I 3D printed the cable chains and they cost just under £5 in uh, plastic to do the printing, which gives us a grand total of £157.45. So, yeah, I didn't quite manage the £150 challenge, but I came close. Uh, and what I now have is a great hobby CNC, which I'm really, really happy with. The design of which is easily modifiable again in the future um, and we can make the machine wider by just replacing those centre extrusions and widening, widening the gantry. Um, other things like NEMA 23 stepper motors, even cutting new aluminium side panels. Uh, they're all easy modifications uh, for this. So um, there's definitely much more to come from the mach machine. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.